These two bros end up stuck in their car during a zombie apocalypse, but the worst part is having to stand each other. Imagine the awkward silences, and don't even mention the bathroom breaks. Imagine the smell. In the opening act, we meet Mickey, a dude so chill he's just casually jamming to tunes on his headphones while the world goes to heck around him. Zombies? Who cares? Not Mickey, that's for sure. His buddy Ben bursts out of the house having just taken down a zombie like a boss, and it becomes crystal clear that we've landed smack dab in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Bummer, right? Mickey and Ben, former baseball bros, find themselves amongst the few living souls left on Earth. They trek through forests like a twisted summer camp, gathering supplies and avoiding those pesky, flesh-craving zombies. The world's gone post-apocalyptic, and these two spend most of their time bored out of their skulls. But hey, at least they have each other. Ben's adapted to the new world like a zombie-slaying ninja, while Mickey would rather drown out the horror with his trusty headphones. One day, Mickey hits the jackpot and wins $1,000 on a scratch card. But Ben's all like, dude, money's meaningless now. Get with the program. They reminisce about their baseball days and indulge in a good old game to pass the time. On their journey, they stumble upon a cabin in the woods, which isn't at all creepy or anything. Ben bravely checks it out, gun in hand, while Mickey stays outside, shaking in his boots. Ben gives the cabin the all clear, then suggests they fish for dinner. But Mickey's sick of their sushi on repeat diet, so he whips out some canned goods. Turns out Ben's been secretly offing zombies outside the cabin, but Mickey's not cool with it since he thought the woods were a zombie-free zone. Ben's like, chill man, I said there were fewer zombies here, not zero zombies. The dynamic duo continues their journey, and bam, they find an abandoned car. Zombie lady pops out of the driver's seat, but Ben's got it covered and takes her out. The car has gas, so their survival story gets an upgrade. Road trip time. Mickey gets the bright idea to hit up his ex-girlfriend's house for supplies. While there, he gets all nostalgic, sniffing her clothes and wiping her perfume like a lovesick puppy. Ben, the practical one, stags useful stuff like walkie-talkies. He suggests grabbing blankets and pillows for their sweet new ride, but Mickey's had enough of the nomad life and wants to crash at his ex's place for a little while. Ben's not about that life, though. He reminds Mickey of the early days of the apocalypse when they were holed up in Mickey's house with his whole fam. It was a nightmare, and they even had to resort to killing the family dog for food. Yikes. Average day in Bing Chilling Land. So the boys keep rolling, hitting the open road and embracing their life on the run. Just two dudes, a car, and a world full of zombies. What could go wrong? In the end, zombies trash the house like a college frat party gone wrong, leaving only Mickey and Ben standing in the aftermath. They continued their journey, determined to prove that their bromance could survive anything. One day, while Mickey was jamming to his playlist of carefree tunes, Ben pulled a classic prank by pretending to be a zombie. As Mickey jumped out of his skin, Ben pointed out that, you know, maybe cranking the volume on his headphones wasn't the best idea. You know, given the zombies and all. Just a thought. Taking his buddy's advice, Mickey ditched the headphones and uncovered a pair of walkie-talkies. After getting them up and running, they stumbled upon a signal from other survivors. It was like an exclusive club that required a secret handshake, except the password was surviving a zombie-infested world. Listening in, they discovered that life carried on for these lucky folks, complete with birthday parties, movie nights, and a buffet of non-expired snacks. Mickey couldn't resist butting in, asking if they could crash the party. Unfortunately, the voice on the other end was as friendly as a hangry zombie, telling them there was no room at the inn and ordering Annie, another survivor, to ghost Mickey and Ben. Despite being shot down, Mickey became obsessed with reaching out to Annie, while Ben rolled his eyes at his buddy's hopeless romanticism. Ben, ever the practical one, advised Mickey to follow his lead if he wanted to keep his limbs intact. Later, the duo stumbled upon an eerily empty campground. Mickey, investigating a building, found a group of zombies having a not-so-lively party in one of the halls. Ben had to step up and save the day, dealing with the zombies like a pro. Meanwhile, Ben tried to convince Mickey that zombie slang was a useful skill in their world, but Mickey didn't see the point. Eventually, Ben took care of the undead crowd himself. In the next scene, Ben went for a swim, leaving Mickey snoozing in the car. Mickey's nap was rudely interrupted by a zombie girl attempting to break into the car like a sleep-deprived student, trying to open a locked library. Mickey panicked, calling for Ben, but ultimately realized he was on his own. After some observation, Mickey concluded the zombie girl was more into window shopping than actually breaking in. Having been without any companionship for months, Mickey decided it was time to get creative and make the most of this bizarre situation. Meanwhile, the zombie girl continued her window-banking symphony, offering a strange soundtrack to Mickey's desperate attempt at intimacy. At some point, Ben returned to the car, catching Mickey in the midst of his romantic rendezvous with the zombie. Ben couldn't help but chuckle at the sight of his friend, before popping a cap in the undead's noggin. Not cool. He was enjoying the view. And with that, the friend's relationship, much like their zombie-filled world, was starting to decay. One day, they stumbled upon a cottage in the woods. Mickey threw a tantrum, demanding a sleepover. Ben, with the patience of a saint, or someone who's just tired of arguing with a grown man in his undies, agreed. Little did Mickey know, Ben had a secret. He was a closeted music enthusiast, who knew the apocalypse could be so groovy. But Ben was tired of Mickey's antics, especially his constant battery draining. 
which was like sending an open invitation to the nearest zombie flash mob. Ben tried to be the voice of reason, but Mickey, never one to take things lightly, stormed off in a huff. Meanwhile, Mickey hit up Annie on the radio, the only girl he talked to since, well, ever. She revealed the survivor camp was less paradise and more dystopian nightmare, and advised him to give up on joining. Mickey, however, was ready to ditch Ben faster than you can say. Toxic friendship, but Annie wasn't having it. Ben, now in party mode, cranked up the tunes, drank like a fish, and danced with his trusty gun like it was prom night all over again. Then, in the ultimate trust exercise gone wrong, Ben kidnapped a zombie and locked it in a room with a snoozing Mickey and a baseball bat. Ben's ears were met with the symphony of Mickey's terrifying screams and bat on zombie action. Finally, the door creaked open, revealing a blood-soaked Mickey, gasping for breath and ready for payback. He launched himself at Ben, fists flying, but Ben couldn't help but be proud that Mickey had finally grown a pair and offed a zombie. Mickey spilled the beans about his chat with Annie and her warning about the camp. Tears streaming down his face, Mickey mourned the loss of a normal life, but Ben was there to pick up the pieces. United once more, they took on the world like a post-apocalyptic Thelma and Luis, fishing, sharing life stories, playing baseball, and eating melons straight from the tree. A few days later, they stumbled upon an abandoned car, still warm to the touch. Ben focused on siphoning gas like a pro, but failed to notice an unknown man taking Mickey hostage, and so their wild, wacky adventure continued. The man goes all Liam Neeson on them, demanding the keys to the boy's car, or Mickey will be meeting God. Ben offers to tag along, but the visitor's got a one-way ticket to Arizona and isn't looking for a bromance. Desperate, Ben plays the guilt card, asking if he's really gonna clap Mickey just to hitch a ride. The stranger spills the tea, saying he was promised a getaway, food, and a car, if he slaved away all winter. But they ghosted him, and now he's gotta bounce before they catch up. The dude loses it again and threatens to play Picasso on Mickey's face with a knife. Ben tries some Jedi mind tricks, saying the keys are already in the ignition. If the man lets Mickey go, Ben will put the gun away and hand over the car. The man agrees, shoves Mickey aside, and hops in the driver's seat. But surprise! The keys are chilling in Ben's pocket. Caught red-handed, the man makes a run for it, but Ben shoots him, leaving Mickey shook. The boys are having a philosophical powwow about the whole mess when they realize they've got some crashers. A female voice from the car is all, Chill, we come in peace, just looking for a stolen car. Mickey's cool with it, but Ben's not buying it and points his revolver at the stranger's car. Out steps a smoking hot girl and a dude packing the heat. The girl tells her sidekick to grab a canister and they saunter over. When she asks who was driving the car, Ben decides to get creative, saying the driver got zombified, so they had to put him down. The girl keeps grilling them, asking if the man shared any juicy details about himself or the car. Ben plays it cool, saying it was all pretty vanilla, but Mickey doesn't get the memo, fanboying over the girl as the one from the radio. Annie goes full 180, shooting Ben in the leg and pointing a rifle at Mickey. Busted. She threatens to snuff them out. If they follow her to their hideout, she wipes their keys and eats them into a field, making a clean getaway, while the boys go on a key hunt. Mickey's key searching skills are about as effective as a blind squirrel. So as night falls, Ben suggests they sleep in the car and resume the treasure hunt. In the morning, Mickey wakes up in the middle of the night to some spooky noises. They hit the headlights, only to see a zompocalypse bearing down on them. Ben's leg is out of commission, so the two are stuck in the car. The next morning, their undead fan club has surrounded the car groaning and rocking it like they're at a death metal concert. The boys find themselves in a pickle, with zombies sticking around like uninvited party guests. Mickey's a shivering mess, while Ben's trying to MacGyver their way out. Ben takes out a few zombies like a pro gamer, but there's still a swarm left. Frustrated, Ben blames Mickey, cause who needs Annie when you've got a zombie fan club? Hours turn into a zombie watching marathon, and their food and water supplies are running low. It's a standoff between the undead and the underfed. The next day, the boys channel their inner interior decorators and cover the windows with blankets hoping the zombies will think they've ghosted. Spoiler alert, zombies aren't easily ghosted. To prevent a total mental breakdown, the boys decide to get wasted. Cause what's a zombie apocalypse without a little partying, right? In the morning, hungover and desperate, they know it's time to make a move. Ben asks Mickey the channel's interaction hero, find the keys and save the day. If that fails, Mickey must fly solo and escape. But Mickey vows to stick with his bro, come hell or high zombie. After a final sig, Mickey emerges from their hideout. Ben's left waiting like he's on the world's worst blind date. Just as hope dwindles, he hears a knock from above. He flings the door open, ready for a tearful reunion. But Mickey's hand is bleeding like a bad horror movie prop. Oh wait. And you guessed it. He's been bitten. Mickey begs for help, but Ben knows the drill. One gunshot later, and it's a tear-soaked farewell. Grieving, Ben goes full-on fetus mode for a few days. Eventually, he tries to radio Annie. He shares their epic escape plan from Mickey's parents' house, which involves zombies, distractions, and mad dashes. Ben plans to pull the same move and then find Annie for a not-so-friendly headshot. To kick off his plan, Ben cranks up Mickey's tunes and unveils the car windows, like a zombie rave. He leaps out and makes a run for it. In the final scenes, we see Ben limping down the road, leading a zombie conga line. Now he's got one goal, to avenge Mickey's death and make the zombies pay. More of the story? I would.